Hello and welcome to your source for personal growth and business development strategies from a biblical perspective. My name is Ralph Irvin and if you're tuned in, it's probably because you're interested in learning how you can start an online business even if your budget is tight and your time is limited. Now there's no secret that the internet has leveled the playing field where business is concerned and now millions of people make money online. Now of course, like with anything, you'll need to bring commitment and focus to the table, but you no longer have to have an unlimited budget in order to bring your skills and talents to the marketplace. Now the information I'm about to share with you is important because now more than ever, people are looking for opportunities to make extra cash to take care of their families, get out of debt, especially if you have student loans, save for the future, create financial freedom, or just to get their time back. So if you're interested in learning how you can start an online business with minimal out-of-pocket or even for free in some cases, then be sure to stay with me. Now let me tell you exactly what you can expect. I'm going to share with you the three business models I recommend, how to determine which one might be right for you, and how you can overcome any challenges you might experience along the way. And don't worry, links to everything we discuss will be included in the description box below. So after you watch this video, be sure to check that out. So now that we've set the table, let's get down to business. The first business model I recommend is the online freelancer model. Now what exactly is an online freelancer? Let's walk through the definition together. An online freelancer is someone who is self-employed and works based on an agreement made directly with an individual or a company. Now the term of this agreement can be short term or long term and freelancers often sign with staffing agencies who provide them opportunities of course for a fee and you can expect that fee to be prearranged. Another way to describe a freelancer is by the term independent contractor. You have a skill, someone has a need, and you negotiate and come to terms. That's basically all that it is. Now with anything, there are things that are great and not so great about being an online freelancer. So let's walk through the pros and cons of this business model. So let's start with the pros. The first pro is independence. You work for yourself, you can make your own rules, you can do things your way, you have creative control. The next pro is flexibility. So you can work from wherever in the world you want, especially with this online model, and that's what makes it the most attractive. And the third pro is that it may lead to a job offer. Now, you may wanna stay independent, and that's totally your choice, but if your lifestyle changes for some reason and you just decide that you no longer wanna be independent, Doing work with excellence at a fair price is likely to lead to an, a more permanent opportunity which you might want to take advantage of. Now here are some of the cons you might want to consider. The first one is inconsistent work, especially when you're first starting out. You haven't established a reputation yet, so it takes time for you to build that reputation and for people to get to know you and for you to become synonymous with quality work. The next con, and this is a big one, no employee benefits. Now, unless you're covered through a spouse who works for a company, you're on your own. And that's one of the drawbacks to self-employment. So depending on where you live, you'll have to research how to obtain employee benefits on your own, such as health care and other benefits that you might need. And the third con is tax payments and reporting. You're it. There's no big company. There's no HR department that's going to handle your taxes, take it out of your check, report it to the IRS, and all those kinds of things. As you get paid, it's your responsibility to escrow the amount that you know you're gonna to have to pay in taxes based on the rules of whatever country that you're from. So this is something that's very important, gets a lot of people in trouble if they're not paying attention, and something you may wanna consider. Now where this is concerned, you can contract with a payroll company, and there are plenty of them out there, who can do this for you as you get paid. So if you get paid by check or if you get paid by direct deposit for your services, then you can have this payroll company manage that for you. But bigger picture, this is your responsibility. Now go with me as I share my screen and show you what two of the most popular online freelancer platforms look like and how they work. So here at Fiverr.com, which is one of the primary freelancer accounts that I use, you have here in the search bar, virtual administrative assistant, which is what I've decided to look up for this example. Now, as you'll see, there are 2,721 search results for virtual administrative assistant. So uh, pretty broad, but you, there are ways to make yourself stand out. So I am going to have a look at this here. So let's see, let's start with best selling. And what we could do is sort the providers that have the most traction. Now, one of the reasons that there are so many search results is because 
when you say virtual assistant, well, assistant for what? So there are people that specialize in different things. So uh, let me just say that none of the people I'm going to pull up here, there's, there's, I don't know any of them or who they are. This is not an endorsement of them. But let's go through and you'll notice that the thumbnails, which make the ad look pretty attractive. Some people use general thumbnails that you know highlight some of the work that they do. Some people use their personal image. Some people use a graphic that describes some of the services that they offer. So let's go ahead and pick this one as an example. Again, I don't know this person, but let's have a look. So right before you go any further, this person describes specifically what they do under this role. So they'll do virtual, that's a bit redundant, virtual and personal. So administrative support, project management, and that could mean a lot of things, like what kind of project. So that may be something you need to do a little bit more research on. Uh, customer support, data entry, Microsoft Office applications here, file conversion, typing, all of those types of things that this person seems to provide. So if I go to the next image, okay, this uh, is really just something to show a little bit of teamwork. Uh, seems like they have the same image a couple times, but I think you get the overall point that you can outline what it is that you specifically do. So this person says that they're willing to do it for $5. Now that isn't always the case. A lot of times that's just a starting point and once you share specifically what it is you're interested in having done, they'll give you a price. Also there are packages that people have. So this provider is from Pakistan and this person's been around since February of 2019. It seems like they respond pretty quickly so they may have some help where that's concerned because I'm sure this person's not up 24 hours a day. But he's put together some packages so let's start with the basics. So you have the basic support, and here are the check marks as to what that includes, followed by the standard and the premium. Now, one of the other things I want to point out is reviews, and this is so important. Let's see, where are his reviews? Uh, da, 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 da. Let's, sorry to be scrolling so fast. Uh, let's go back to the search results here. So this person looks like they're fairly new. They don't have any reviews. And that's something that can hurt you in the very beginning because typically when people are searching for administrative help, they want a little bit of a track record. They want to see that other people have used you to get a sense of you know, the quality of the work that you do, how well you respond, how accurate you are. So it's really up to you to stand out and to make sure that you create a compelling enough case for people to use your services. Now one way to do that and to get some reviews pretty early is to advertise on maybe Facebook or Instagram that hey this is what I'm doing and if you need some help go ahead and reach out to me and let's talk. So that might be a way amongst you know family and friends or maybe your church or if you volunteer maybe through resources that are available with who you work with that you could get some reviews and get started and just kind of build a little traction that way. So that's Fiverr.com and you can just get in there and explore a little bit and get a feel for it. Now here is Upwork.com. This is Upwork.com and I typed in administrative assistant and there's an option to go US only or not. I chose not to. Here's a section with filters. So typically what I do when I'm looking for full support is I want people who are getting good ratings. So job success I want 90% and up. There's really no point in me with fooling around with anyone that's has lower results than that when 15,000, you know, 500 people have 90% or above ratings. And I'll even filter that a little bit more, saying that I want someone who's earned at least, let's say, $1,000. So what that tells me is that they've done enough jobs to have accumulated that much in earnings, which tells me that, you know, they've been at this a little bit, you know, a little while. Here's the hourly rate, hours billed, all of these things which are pretty self-explanatory. So those are the filters. And what you can do is just look through the various filters. And again, an image is nice. It's very important. And, you know, $60 an hour, I don't know if I'd go that high, but $750 an hour, $50 an hour. It really just depends on what it is you bring to the table and the skills that you have. And just getting started, you can always increase your fee as you get busier. So if you get to the point where so requesting your services that you really just can't keep up with it all, then that may be time to raise your price. There, again, there are skills you have that you can monetize, and this is something you can do from the comfort of your home, having to punch a clock, and to build something to where you get consistent business and consistent opportunity to make extra money or even make this your full-time career. 
I hope this little demonstration has been helpful. Again, Fiverr.com and Upwork.com. Check it out. The second business model I recommend is the online publisher model. Now a publisher is someone who disseminates literature, music, or information to the general public. Now just like with the online freelancer model, a publisher is self-employed. Very important to remember that. Now normally a publisher publishes within a specific niche or to an audience or demographic. So your niche might be cooking or it could be fitness or some other niche or, or demographic that you're targeting with your material. Now there's no longer a high barrier to entry where publishing is concerned. You may remember that there was a time where if you didn't get discovered by some big publishing company, it was almost impossible to get your story out. But now that's changed because again, the internet has leveled the playing field where that's concerned. You don't even have to be an experienced writer and I'll go into more of that later. And you can improve on an existing idea because the online publisher model is exploding. There are so many creative and talented people out there who are finally being heard and here's your chance to be one of them. Now let's walk through the pros and cons of the online publisher model. First, you have complete creative freedom, which is exciting. You also have unlimited income potential. The more your book sells, the more money you'll make, and that's very exciting. You have access to global markets, so you're not just limited to people around you or people in your home country. There are publishers who produce content in multiple languages, and it's able to make an impact on people worldwide. That's also very attractive. Your story and what you've experienced in life may make a positive impact to someone and bless their life. Maybe you went through something traumatic or maybe you went through something exciting that just really resonates with people and inspires them to take action and inspires them to overcome some challenges they may have had in their lives. And one of the best pros of the online publisher model is no inventory. You are not going to have books stacked wall to wall in your home that you're trying to get rid of. Everything is completely online. Now here are the cons of the online publisher model. This model requires consistent marketing. Actually all online business models do, but especially the publisher model. You really have to get out there and do the work necessary to get your idea out and to build momentum. Depending on your niche, your market may be oversaturated and that's something you'll have to research. There are a lot of fitness gurus out there, cooks and people who are producing content and you'll have to compete with them. Now, depending on who you align with, such as Amazon Kindle, it may require exclusive distribution. So what that means is that if you agree to sell your book through Amazon, then you can't sell it through any other platform. So that's something you'll have to make a business decision about. Now, new editions require removal of all previous editions. So if you've released an edition of your book and you're looking to improve upon that and release a new edition, Think about the fact that you've gotten a lot of reviews which can be exciting about the edition that you had. So you have to remove that before you release the upcoming edition, which means that all of those reviews go away. So you're essentially starting over where momentum is concerned to a degree, but again, if the first one did well and you're releasing a new, updated, and expanded version, you can just reach out to the market that you had previously and hopefully they'll be interested in buying your updated version. And unfortunately, you will have to deal with negative reviews. There are people who leave negative reviews just for fun. There are people who you just can't please no matter what you do. That's always been the case and that will always be the case, but that's something that you just simply have to deal with and overcome. The third online business model that I recommend is that of an influencer or an affiliate. Now this is basically someone who recommends a product or service and receives compensation from the company that they've recommended. An example of this might be in the fitness space. If you're a personal trainer and there are supplements that you regularly use or if there's a piece of equipment that you're very familiar with and your clients have gotten good results, then you may have an opportunity to align with that company to be an influencer for that particular piece of equipment and each time a piece of that equipment is sold based on your recommendation, you'll receive compensation from that company. So let's walk through a little bit more information about the influencer and affiliate model. This is basically a paid testimonial that requires a following. Now don't be discouraged by that requires a following piece because again, there are celebrities who have massive followings, but we all have a following. Now it's performance based, so the harder you work and the more that you make recommendations, then the better you'll do. Now the most successful influencers and affiliates educate people. They don't just go slanging products and say buy this and buy that. 
they educate people and they share how this is going to be helpful to them, how this is going to add value to their life, how this is going to potentially solve a problem. So you should always lead with education if you want to have the best chance of being successful at the influencer affiliate model and also not come across as slimy and sleazy and trying to hustle people. And you always want to add value first. Education is a great way to add value. Reviews are a way to add value. Demonstrations are a way to add value. So if you can clearly communicate how this product or service has impacted your life and how it's added value to you, then that's adding value to your customer. That's adding value to the people around you that you influence. Now some of the pros and cons of being an influencer are as follows. Number one, it's completely free to begin. So this is a great thing. Now it may cost additional money to scale and that's not really a cost, that's an investment. So the larger you want to grow it, the more you may have to invest in doing so. Now it aligns seamlessly with freelancing and publishing because one of the ways you can provide that value and educate your audience is through publishing. It provides a way to add additional value to someone. So if you've already published on fitness, then maybe as an affiliate, you can recommend specific tools to help people achieve fitness. And I'm sure just like you, I know that I get offered all the time or asked all the time, you know, who do you recommend? What service do you use? Who did you purchase that from? So again, these are things that you're already doing and the income potential is absolutely explosive. And the best part is you don't have to have any experience. Think about it. You don't have professional experience recommending the products and services and experiences that you currently recommend. And it's no different as an affiliate marketer. And once again, you're already doing it. So why not put yourself in a position where you can take your skill sets and generate additional revenue streams based on the recommendations that you make with products and services with which you have experience. Now here are the cons. You have no control over program terms and conditions. Companies have affiliate programs that they've already established and they have their terms and conditions set. You don't control that. Now it takes time to build trust, so if you haven't done any publishing, you haven't recommended products uh, extensively through social media, even though again on a casual basis we all do it, it may take time to get people to really trust your recommendations. So you have to invest the time and invest the effort where that's concerned. Now always remember that quality comes first. Some people take the quantity route and end up crashing and burning where every time you turn around, they're selling something, they're recommending something, they're trying to get you to buy something. That's not the way to do it. Carefully select what it is that you think will really help the people that follow you, and that's gonna be the best course of action. Now keep in mind, you have no control over competition as well. There are other affiliate marketers out there. Some may be recommending the same products and services that you have, and may have larger audiences. So. I don't really see this as a negative because that just means you have to work hard and you have to hustle. Again, this is a business. This is not a get rich quick by any stretch of the imagination. And you have no control over service. Now this is a big one. So if someone buys a product, let's say it's a treadmill and that treadmill malfunctions, of course they're going to be disappointed, but you didn't produce or manufacture that treadmill. So that may be a service related issue that the person who acted on your recommendation has with the company and that could cause a little bit of negativity. But again, that's something that you can overcome through education and through reinforcing the fact that this is something that you used yourself. Now, the most important thing I want you to take away from this conversation is that you do have skills and talents that are marketable. There's nothing wrong with working nine to five if that's what you're passionate about and if you love your job but it's my job to let you know that there is a different path should you choose to take it that gives you unlimited income potential as well as time freedom that you can spend for other things that matter to you most. Now you may be saying to yourself that I don't know the first thing about becoming an online publisher. I wouldn't even know where to start. And you may be saying the same thing about affiliate marketing. Well, don't worry, check out the links that I have in the description box below. One of them is to an online course that I've personally used myself that is fantastic, that has helped me in my publishing career. And the other one is to a free webinar that goes into very explicit detail about the affiliate marketing opportunity. I highly recommend that you check both of those links out. Now I'd love to hear your feedback, so please leave some comments below to let me know how this has impacted you and what you'd like to learn about next. 
Now, regardless of whether you're interested in starting an online business or a brick and mortar business, there are certain fundamental principles that you need to know. So hit the bell notification because in my next video, I'm going to share with you some tools and resources as well as some principles you need to be aware of to be successful in business. And these will also help you run your household as well. So you definitely won't want to miss that. So once again, thanks for tuning in. This is Ralph. I hope this has been helpful. Please leave some comments below and always remember that faith plus works equals achievement. And I'll see you in the next video.